If I were to ask you how many comets would be visible from Earth today, what would your answer be? One of those comets we could probably see on Stereo A. We've identified it as Comet C2020 S3 Erasmus, and we'll show you its orbital diagram shortly. Matches perfectly with what we are seeing. But there's also C2020 M3 Atlas. Uh, it's very bright at 8.5. Uh, under a, of course, binoculars, and that's, of course, in the northern hemisphere. Eight eighty-eight p Hell is another one, ten magnitude, recently brightening, as of December 9th, visible in the evening low sky. Will be getting fainter gradually. 141P Macholtz 2. Uh, somebody was very belligerent, told me the comets I was showing was Macholtz 2, which would, cannot be. And Macholtz 2 cannot and should not be crossing uh, underneath Earth or by Earth for another few days. Yet we see a complete transit of a comet we cannot identify. One That is visible on SOHO satellite. 141P Macholtz Brightened very rapidly in December, it is uh, now 13.5 magnitude as of December 7th. Two more fragments have been observed too, 17.5 and 18. It stays observ observable for a very long time. And there's also, 156P Russell Lanier, uh, brightened rapidly, and is bright at 10.3 uh, December 9th. Again, visible, northern hemisphere, observable in good conditions. For a long time in the southern hemisphere, it will be extremely low after January. 398P 2020P2 Boatini, come on, that's too many numbers. A new periodic comet. How do we have a new periodic comet? Uh, we, we should know about them. Why? Because they're periodic. They've been here before. Oh, a new periodic comet. Hmm, what does that mean? But 12.8 uh, magnitude, uh, December 9th. Will brighten to 12 magnitude and will be observable and as an excellent condition in winter. Uh, they say. Then there's C19N1 Atlas, another Atlas, uh, brightening up to 13.5. In the summer of July 31st, however, in December, is visible in the morning sky. Will stay observable in good conditions in the northern hemisphere. But very low sky in November and December. Then there's 3200 Phaeton. Oh, the famed Phaeton. Part asteroid, part comet. We think all comets are. But it will approach the sun very close to the sun. 0.14 AU on December 7th will brighten up to 11 magnitude. But is not observable at the high light um, background. It's just going to get washed out. Also, December 9th, 29P Sch Schwassmann. Slash Watchman, that's a cool name. Schwachman slash Watchman. Number one. Now at 13.8 magnitude as of December 9th. Oh, yeah, C. Remember this guy, C217 T2 Pan Stars, uh, 8.9 magnitude. Now observable. It's up uh, here in the morning sky. At about 14.5 magnitude. Are you kidding me? What is this? A comet swarm is what it is. We are, And we showed you our comet diagrams earlier. But the comets are just streaming through and around and into our solar system. So if your answer was, what, that many, then you would have been right. But we think Esmason coming out of a fe fecus, they say, um, is a relative to Comet McNaught. 
Comet McNaught, that big, massive comet that uh, showed up at our intro to the video. That's Comet McNaught. That came out of Ophiuchus. What else comes out of Ophiuchus? Oh, the original radiant point of the helium focusing cone came out of Ophiuchus. Kind of interesting little set of scenarios there. I find it odd that a lot of these perihelions occur when Earth is and near Earth in November. McNaught barely missed, whoo, just swiping us with the massive tail. Barely missed us. When? In January. So that puts that orbit where Earth would have been in December. So a lot of these December perihelions, not all of them, but a lot of them, are occurring right around Earth's orbit, where Earth is in December. Comet McNaught, if, if we were one month late in our orbit, would have, would have bathed us in its tail. But this comet flying underneath the sun almost parallel to the equator of the sun, but yet underneath the sun, therefore cannot be as Erasmus, and it and it can't be Macholtz too, either. Uh, I cannot identify this comet, so we're seeing two different comets on two different satellites, and that would sound a little rare. But when you see how many visible comets there actually are in this night sky today, as we speak you would uh, blink. Now, Macholtz, by this diagram, uh, isn't set to cross uh, in front of Earth for another uh, another week. And this, this is the 14th of uh, November showing you it is still yet to reach uh, the place where it would cross under Earth. But as it does cross under Earth, you can surely see that that uh, it comes awfully close to the, our planet, closer than almost any comet has come in a long, long, long time. And I, and be, being that it's fragmented, uh, you know, we got to wonder why there's so many discrepancies in both the orbital calculation and both the reporting of when the said perihelion is supposed to occur. Uh, according to the diagram, it occurred, you know, about a month ago when this thing crossed the orbit or touched the orbit of Venus. And then Erasmus um, is coming from underneath the sun, uh, coming up at an upward incline, and it has put the sun directly in between it and Stereo A. Stereo A is out there, you know, it's roughly in the position where Mars is. So you can see uh, anything... Uh, coming through and underneath the sun right now would be captured on stereo A. That would be Erasmus. But Macholtz, no matter how you slice it, no two diagrams are agreeing. Uh, the written calculations, they're all disagreeing because there's been a change in its orbit and it's been affected by the um, flyby of planet X. As of December 14th, it hasn't even transited the sun yet. It should not be visible in SOHO. So the comet that we see flying through the field of vision in SOHO is neither Erasmus, Erasmus, did I say that right, or Macholtz II. So the, literally, there, there's comets going to be flying in and out of these satellite images for quite some time. We are literally witnessing a comet swarm. But what is so interesting is the crossing point, the perihelion point on some of these comets are in fact almost in the same position that Earth is in in late November, mid-December, and early January. A lot of comets have come around and reached their perihelion or close to perihelion around that time. But Comet Max Holtz 2 showing you right now a current position of Max Holtz 2 right now is nowhere near crossing in front of Earth. Therefore, any, any comet caught transiting the Earth and Sun line, it has to be 
another comet. Uh, and we cannot identify it yet, and it's going to take us some time to identify it yet. We've sent out some emails, not getting any answers yet, but obviously there's something going on with these comet swarms. And it's no coincidence that a lot of their perihelions happen on the December side of the sun. There's a lot of perihelions that are happening on the December side of the sun for a lot of objects. NEOs, comets, you name it. So this December corridor, this, this line um, extending through the sun and earth uh, out towards Ophiuchus um, in December is also a really interesting corridor for the Kreutz comets that their their aphelions are on the same same corridor so if a giant massive comet came out of Ophiuchus or out of the Kreutz corridor and fragmented it literally could send comets in the completely opposite orbit that is why we have comet groups that oppose one another because when you fragment, you send some fragments flying off into the other direction of space that your aphelion is. Because as it's crossing and accelerating, uh, it's slinging fragments roughly in the direction it was traveling during fragmentation. The uh, smaller fragments may be captured, pulled back around and sent right back out to where it came from. But those remaining fragments may be cast out into the opposite direction of the sun, which would give rise to uh, M M the McNaught family of comets, the Ophiuchus uh, family of comets, but also the Kreutz family of comets. They're all coming in through this corridor uh, from both directions, from opposite the sun of both directions. So we think Comet McNaught and Comet Ison may be related because McNaught comes out of Ophiuchus, makes its perihelion in December, and if it fragmented then, would send something out into that same plane that would then eventually come back around roughly at the same intervals as the previous comet. Roughly. So then that would give rise to the Kreutz family and this, uh, this Ophiuchus family. And also, uh, some of these comets, uh, by the way, are also entering and exiting through Aquarius. Uh, Aquarius has more comet groups than any other uh, periodic comet location. But now, with all these new periodic comets, and that, you know, that record may be broken. And, and we'll have to dig into that just a little more. Until next time, be prepared, not scared.